Well, good afternoon, church family. I trust that you are well and enjoying God's grace for you today. I um, want to remind you to uh, lift up Barb Christian and their family. Uh, today is the uh, visitation for John, and tomorrow uh, they will uh, lay him in the grave. And so uh, pray for them that they would know God's comfort in a very uh, near and present way. And that we as their church family can come alongside and just help to um, bear their burden uh, with them and and um, just love on them. So uh, please continue to, to lift them up in prayer. I wanted to share a devotion with you uh, from <clears throat> Psalm 90. And uh, this psalm is actually uh, a prayer of Moses and thinking about as it looks as though we are moving toward the um, uh, the other side, at least, of some of this coronavirus, it, it seems as perhaps we have uh, maybe have hit a peak and are moving towards the other side of that. Um, uh, this psalm reminds us a little bit of perspective. Um, and I read just the other day, uh, one author, he said, uh, on the other side of the coronavirus, the wisest people um, will not be those who've diversified their financial portfolios, nor those who have stocked up on masks and toilet paper in preparation for a potential second wave, but those who have learned um, really what Moses reminds us of in, in Psalm 90. So let me read this psalm. I actually want to read the entire psalm. It's, it's 17 verses, uh, but there's so much there uh, as it reminds us uh, uh, or helps us to focus our perspective. So Psalm 90, verse 1, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. That is that is the baseline. That's the foundation uh, of everything. Uh, Moses goes on to say, uh, as it as it looks at as we look at ourselves, as we look at the frailty of life, you return man to dusk, and you say, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away with a flood, and they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, and in the evening it fades and it withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath we are dismayed. We have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all of our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are as 70 or if by reason of strength 80. Yet their span is, is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Um, Moses says, James essentially repeats this as he reminds us that, that our life is like a vapor and and the the perspective of where we focus our uh, our minds, our thoughts, our energies, our resources um, uh, are so vitally important. So verse 12, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days is Moses' prayer, that we would look at the the life that we have, and we look at the days that we're given, and that we would number them, that we would cherish them, that we would value them and use them in such a way um, as to be of eternal significance and eternal value. Uh, return, O Lord, how long have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad in all our days, in all of our days. When, when God's steadfast love is the source of joy and gladness, um, it is constant. Uh, make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. That... Reminder, particularly of, of our days as we number them, um, C.S. Lewis, uh, at the beginning of World War II, uh, made this statement. He said, the war creates no absolutely new situation. 
It simply aggravates the permanent human situation so that we can no longer ignore it. Human life has always been lived on the edge of a precipice. And it's times like this where we're reminded of that. Um, we seem to be shaken. Uh, and yet the reality is all of life is lived uh, there. Um, he goes on to say, as, the, as Moses concludes about establishing the work of our hands, Lewis said this, he said, the work of a Beethoven and the work of a char woman become spiritual on precisely the same condition that of being offered to God or being done humbly as unto the Lord. Much of our labor in the Lord will be of the charwoman variety. And I had no idea what that word meant, and so I had to look it up. A, a charwoman was essentially um, someone, a lady who had been hired to clean homes. That, that was her, her task. She was a house cleaner. Um, and so when you think of all of the perhaps mundane things that go with house cleaning, um, Lewis was comparing Beethoven with house cleaning. And he says that much of our labor in the Lord will be more like the charwoman, more like the house cleaning than, than Beethoven. Small necessary acts of service that fall in line with the callings that God has given to us, yet each is dedicated to God in faith. And so um, that's a reminder. And as we look forward, as you look forward in, in your life as an individual, and in your family, in your home, and your relationships, um, pray with Moses. Lord, teach me to number my days. Teach me to uh, make them count uh, for, for your uh, eternal glory and for the eternal good of those around me. Uh, so give it some thought. Contemplate on it. Um, encourage you to, uh, to spend some time in, in Psalm 90. And uh, Lord willing, uh, we will see you tomorrow as we gather together. Um, continuing to pray um, for all of the impacts and the effects of this virus and as it continues to uh, to move forward and and we pray move to an end um, but uh, opportunity to gather together um, wisely but a chance to just be encouraged uh, invite you to come if you're able and uh, if you, you feel so um, comfortable in, in that setting if not please join us on online as we we really talk about um, what's the big deal for the church uh, and, and why is it so important uh, for for her to gather. So um, be encouraged. Uh, Julie and I love you, praying for you. Um, we normally would come together to pray today, um, and we might try to do that tonight if we can get together. She and I are kind of passing, uh, crossing paths today, and, and her sister and family are here. And so um, if we can do that uh Online we will, but please know that we will certainly be doing it uh, together privately. Uh, we love you. God bless.